What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real, where we almost exclusively talk about basketball. And I say that because I mentioned in a past video that I'd be throwing like random, obscure Simpsons references in my videos, where today, in the mail, I just got this. This is like what people consider the Simpsons Bible, the ultimate guide to the Simpsons. So expect my references to get more obscure and more frequent because we got this 300-pound book. Um, Pacer fans, I'm going to say right off rip, I apologize. I still have not given you your video. When you hired your head coach, I told, I came out and told y'all, I don't know who he is. And now it's been a few days, and I can say with 100% certainty, I still don't know who he is. So because of that, I'm going to postpone your video because you're in a lot of rumors right now with trades. So let's wait and see if y'all make some trades before I really talk about things that's going on in Indianapolis. But today, we're talking about the Pelicans. Be sure to leave a like on the video. If you're new around here, subscribe, man. We got this community of 290,000 people that have one common, common love, and that common love is the game of basketball. Wow. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? So subscribe, uh, hit that bell so you never miss a video. So today we're talking about one of the more intriguing young teams in the NBA, the New Orleans Pelicans, a team that was close to making the, the playoffs, and some people, depending on who you ask, I got to say that the play-in experiment was really to try to get Zion Williamson in the playoffs to go against LeBron in the first round so we can have that passing of the torch moment that everybody seems to love. Well, they did not do that, and they ended up losing, and they had like the easiest bubble schedule, and that was the reason why Alvin Gentry did get fired because, well, you have the easiest bubble schedule, and you weren't even in a play-in? That's that's kind of rough, my G, but I will say that Alvin Gentry is a better person than I am on so many different levels. After he was fired, he took a lot of the people that wrote wrote hit pieces on him out to dinner to kind of pick their brain on why they feel a certain way about him. That is admirable. Imagine a YouTuber... (laughs) <laughs> putting it putting it on our perspective going out and finding the people that wrote hate comments is like bro let me take you to dinner it just doesn't work that way there's no way i'm taking hate commenters to dinner but alvin gentry did and uh, i'm hoping that he gets a job eventually i mean whether it be an assistant or whatever because i mean there's only two vacancies left so there's not a lot going on for him maybe it's an assistant coaching job but stan van gundy is the guy now it's been a few years since we've seen stan van gundy as a coach but i do remember a lot of his philosophies and things that he has done and that's why i wanted to come into this video because i think it's an interesting hire for the new orleans pelicans i've seen a lot of people dislike the hire completely and i've seen a lot of people absolutely love the hire i'm somewhat in the middle and i feel like that's really the case with a lot of hiring of coaches it's very rare that you're gonna say right off rip or really realize right off rip whether a hire was great or good, or bad for a team, unless it's like Jim Boylan and he loses the locker room in the first week, it's going to take some time before we really get to know if Stan Van Gundy was the right hire, right? And Stan Van Gundy has a good track record, and I think this is why I'm in the middle, but I'm probably leaning more towards the, I like this hire, because he is a guy that has the reputation of being a pretty good player development coach, and again, the Pelicans are one of the youngest teams in the league, a youngest cores in the league, And then he's also a guy that can help you win games right now. He has an above 500 uh, record as he had coach. And he's taken some pretty okay to bad rosters, make them go really far. Some of his philosophies, like with those Orlando Magic teams, would work today. We're talking about having guys like Hidu Turkoglu, who in this situation would be Brandon Ingram. I guess Brandon Ingram. There's no perfect match from that Orlando match. I was trying to do it and trying to make Zion uh, Dwight Howard, but I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. But there there are philosophies from that team that you can take and incorporate this Pelicans team and be pretty good. He's a good player development uh, coach, and he also can help you win right now. And when you take a look at this roster, they have both of that, right? Lonzo Ball has had the best year of his NBA career, but he's still super young. Zion's going to see your number two, still super young. We know what Zion can be. Oh, we, we can speculate what Zion can be, but we saw in a small little sample size, if, if you can get him to stay fit, he can be a very crazy good player in this league, and Brandon Ingram blossomed into an all-star. But you also got, like, the veterans of Drew Holiday. You also got the veterans of Derek Favors, who the advanced statistics absolutely loved. Derek Favors before he signed to to the New Orleans Pelicans. I don't know what they look like this season. I know I watched them play a bunch, and he just kind of existed on the court. And uh, that wasn't really the case when he was in Utah. So this is a team that on paper should be a very good defensive team, but they were the bottom third of the league. And that's kind of unacceptable when you think about how good of a defender Drew Holiday is. You talk about all the defensive praise we give um, uh, Lonzo 
as a young defender. Brandon Ingram has all the tools to be a good defender. Derek Favors, like I mentioned, advanced stats, absolutely loved him. Josh Hart, these are guys that should be a good defensive team, but they weren't. And one thing that is consistent about Stan Van Gundy's teams is he's going to get the most out of his teams defensively. I, I don't know the specific stats, but I, I can say off the top of my head that he's always had a good defensive team. And it's mostly due to his coaching. Now, the, the one downside, one of the downsides to the Stan Van Gundy thing throughout the course of his career, and people are going to highlight this, is when he was the coach slash general manager. And obviously, that didn't work out with Detroit. Do y'all remember the name John Luer? Because I remember the name John Luer, and he got an absolute bag from Stan Van Gundy. Like, there, there should always, in my opinion, be a third outside source that's building the team and not the coach. Because the coach is always going to think about the now because it's, it's literally his job to win games now. And because of that, he may give a bigger contract than you probably should for John Lure, or he may trade some draft picks away. And off the top of my head, I don't think Stan Van Gundy made any dramatic trades or anything. But those are the type of things that can happen if you have a coach last year. But one thing we've seen is that pretty much all of that is done. Like, I think Doc Rivers was the last one with the Clippers, and that, that even ended a couple seasons ago. So you, really, you very rarely, rarely get that. Uh, Stan Van Gundy. He's a guy that got nothing but high praise from a lot of the players that played for him. J.J. Reddick came out on all the smoke and mentioned how uh, Stan Van Gundy is the best NBA. He made sure he specified NBA because he don't want the Duke heads to come out and talk about, you can't talk bad about Coach K. You just can't. All-time great. So best NBA coach he's ever played for, and one of the reasons he is the player he is today. That's very, very high praise. And before Stan Van Gundy and Dwayne Wade had this little feud, if y'all remember that a few years ago, Dwayne Wade had praised Stan Van Gundy for his coaching when they were together. And it made me think, like, bro, when the heck was Stan Van Gundy coaching Dwayne Wade? And he was the assistant for the Miami Heat when Dwayne Wade was like a rookie and a sophomore. And then Stan Van Gundy was a part of one of the few, one of the few coaching trades in the NBA history. He got traded to the Orlando Magic for a second-round pick. I mean, it worked out because the Orlando Magic ended up going and having a finals appearance under Dwight Howard and, and Stan Van Gundy. Now, that's one thing. The Dwight Howard thing didn't work out as far as them personally, and that's something that people have been writing about as well. How does this 61-year-old guy relate to these low 20-year-olds? But at the end of the day, I think that they're going to recognize how how elite of a NBA mind he is or basketball mind he is and, and start to really put that above anything else. I mean, I'm going to personally miss Stan Van Gundy when he was commentating because I thought he, he threw this extra little thing that a lot of the coaches turned commentators didn't really do. He's breaking down plays to the point where I was like, oh, that's very interesting. And it was funny on the call. I'm also going to miss his Twitter account. Now, he just got Twitter like six months ago, and he's been all over the place with Twitter. But he was one of my most favorite follows because he was not afraid to speak his opinion, and I like stuff like that. But you know, once you get a job in the NBA, you cannot, you cannot tweet anymore. And that's one of the reasons why Magic Johns was like, I'm not going to be here. He wanted to tweet about other teams, and he was not able to do that. So Stan Van Gundy's Twitter account is probably going to die out, which is kind of sad. Depending on who you ask. I know some people probably absolutely hate it. But getting back to his philosophies, a lot of the stuff that he did, especially with the Orlando Magic um, when he was their coach, will fit today um, with just like having a good big. And yes, Zion is that good big, even though he's like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, he will be that big. And just surrounding him with shooters. And now you try to figure out, do you make the roster changes what happens with Drew Holiday? What happens with Derek Favors? Because like I mentioned, he just kind of existed on the court for a lot of the season. And he doesn't really fit Zion as far as like a pair. I think that Zion's going to finish out a lot of games closing at the center. And that just kind of makes Derek Favors obsolete. Like there's the five that should be along Zion. If we're going to put a five next to him, which you probably should because he's 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, it's like the Miles Turner type. He's in, He's been in trade rumors. I don't know if he's been associated with the Pels. Um... The Aaron Baines type, who's a free agent this offseason, the guy that can have the ability to open up the floor for Zion to do bully ball moves like he's used to doing. And I think that if there's anybody that could potentially put together the right system around what Zion could do, it could be him. He's hit on some. He's hit on. He's missed on others. The Drummond thing, there was times where he was a coach and he was trying to give Drummond like post touches. As we know, that's just not who Drummond is. You know, this is not who Drummond is, but then you got the Dwight Howard situation where he, he maximized Dwight Howard on the offensive side of the ball with not really much post game. Stephen Gunny's got his hands full. 
because you're going to have fans that are looking to win now, but you're also going to have fans that that want to see the development of these young players. So they're right there in the middle. This is a team that should be in playoff contention again next season because I don't think they're going to make any significant moves. Brandon Ingram is restricted, and I'm pretty confident that they should bring him back. And Stan Van Gundy, at the end of the day, I think – it's going to turn out to be a pretty solid hire, but again, it's no way for us to really know right off rip. Now let's talk about the remaining coaching vacancies that leaves, that leaves two. One of them is OKC, and I don't, I haven't really read anything about OKC and who they've been hiring or are talking to, or uh, the Houston Rockets is the other one, and Jeff Van Gundy is a finalist for the Houston Rockets job. It's about to be 2009 all over again. Both of the Van Gundy's head coaches, potentially? Oh, that sounds that sounds like a dream. And then we get Jeff Van Gundy off the call. Not a bad idea. I like Jeff Van Gundy sometimes. Sometimes. Not a bad idea. So I'm curious about that. Kenny Atkinson's been a name that, and when I was ranking coaches for my Chicago Bulls, Kenny Atkinson was a name that I wanted to see up there. And so far, he doesn't have a job. And maybe OK sees that. I don't know. But, man, he better figure it out. It's only two jobs left. And I don't know if you really want that Houston Rockets job, Kenny. We need, we need you to go to player development, and OKC would probably be that. I don't know if he's just not interviewing or the people that are interviewing him is like, ah, maybe he's not as good as the average fan thinks he is. I don't really know. At the end of the day, I think Jeff Van Gundy is a very interesting hire um, for, for the Pelicans, and I'm super excited to see the things that he can do for this organization, and I'm super excited to see how Zion is used differently because I, I think there is a world where Zion comes into next season and he plays to an all-star caliber level. I don't think I'm crazy to say that. And Jeff Van Gundy or Stan Van Gundy could potentially bring that out of him. Let me know what you think in the comment section, especially if you're a Pelicans fan. Because, again, I've seen both sides of the coin, and nobody is right, nobody is wrong at this point. We can revisit this video in a year and try to figure things out. Um, but they get, they locked him up. Look at my boy Cole. But they locked him up for four to five years. So he'll be there, whether you like it or not. All right, I'll see y'all later. Peace.